We're there. I just have mine at. Uh, well, welcome everybody, and uh, good turnout tonight. On a, that's a nice night actually, nice day. Um, and we're getting close to Christmas, so I know everybody's getting all uh, prepared for that. And, um, I see a lot of red on this side. Uh, did you guys not get the memo on? Yeah, come on, guys. Some decorations. All right. It well, comes around to the. Comes around anyway. Christmas time. Pretty end of the table. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we got a fairly uh, big agenda tonight, so we want to get going. We're already in and uh, we'll back and open, so we did a close earlier. So we'll move right along. We moved by Deputy Mayor Turton, seconded by Councillor Anderson, that the previous minutes of the November 6, 2018 closed session and November 6, 2018 council meeting and December 4, 2018 inaugural council meeting be approved. All in favor? Additional items? Is this closed? Has anybody got additional items? Nothing. Oh, a couple. Oh, come on, we all, come on, we all do today. Yeah, oh, I, I was going to say, I got the normal thing. Do we have to sing? I think so. I think we uh, sing at the end. We, this well, is our traditional singing. If anybody's yeah. left, <laughs> I think we should sing first. <laughs> okay, uh, yes. There's two of these now, right? I'll come up and do this. Uh, yes. I think so. Yeah, he does. Todd, want to come up? <coughs> How's everybody tonight? Good. Good. Thanks. Todd's going to talk about our DWQ MNS, yeah, his so, favorite subject. Yeah. So there's there's two resolutions tonight. Uh, there we do them annually. Mm -hmm. It's the endorsement of the, the program itself and the endorsement of the policy. Uh, I'll just I'll just read the policy here real quick, just so that everybody knows what we're talking about. So the town of Mineral is committed to supplying consistent, safe drinking water supply, which meets and exceeds all regulatory standards. We strive to achieve these goals through creating and managing a system comprised of policies <coughs> and procedures, which exhibit ongoing evaluation, staff competencies, through training, communication, a pertinent information with consumers and town staff, workplace safety, and contingency response measures. Management and staff of the town of Minnow are committed to producing and maintaining and continuously improving the quality management system. So that's what we're looking to endorse. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I should turn this over to you. Tonight. That's right. Still in our little growing support. Hey, thanks. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. Any questions for uh, Todd? So DWQMS, it's pretty important to this council and this town. And uh, I mean, we, we started this a number of years ago. There was a <coughs> committee and uh, with a, a great group of people, and we still have a great group of uh, people running our water in our town. And, uh, but I, I'm not sure what we need to do here, but uh, I'm certain. Um, so, and further that, is that where we're going? Uh, well, I think we have to pretty much. Okay, so, yeah. all right. So, moved by Councillor Elliott, seconded by Councillor Gunson, that, whereas the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change Safe Drinking Water Act is regulating municipal drinking water license program, and whereas the municipal drinking water license program is a requirement of Justice O'Connor, Part 2 of the Walkerton Inquiry Report, and whereas the certificate of approval which the town of Minto's water system now operates under will be eliminated and upon accredita accreditation will operate under the municipal drinking water license. And whereas the corporation of the town of Minto developed a drinking water quality management standard for its municipal water system as first endorsed on May 9th, 2007 by resolution 19307. Now therefore be it resolved that the council of the corporation of the town of Minto publicly state their commitment to the Drinking Water Quality Management Standard, DWQMS, and that further that the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Minto acknowledge that Todd Rogers, Compliance Coordinator, a very capable and qualified Town of Minto employee, is appointed to the position that will ensure the Drinking Water Quality Management System procedures are followed. All in favor of that motion? Against? That's carried. It's almost like you wrote that last line, huh? <laughs> Sorry. 
Moved by uh, Councillor Dirksen, seconded by Councillor Elliott, that the Council of Town of Minto approve the quality management systems policy for the Town of Minto water supply and distribution system, and further that a copy of the policy is policy is attached to the resolution as Schedule A. Questions on this? All in favor of the motion? Against? That's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Moved by Councillor Dirksen, second by Deputy Mayor uh, Turton. The Town of Mindel Council convenes in the Committee of the Whole. All in favor? Now it's the, uh, is there just a public meeting? We don't, it's part of, it's part of tribunal. So we have a, we have a public meeting tonight uh, to talk about a, uh, a, a dog situation. So I will chair the public meeting and uh, purpose of the meeting and decision of the appeal committee uh, is uh, CBO Terry Kuypers. And information relating to the incident is the subject of the hearing of Cam Forbes bylaw officer. So I'll, I'll maybe have Terry. Are you doing the intro? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> So basically the purpose of this hearing um, is to address the appeal of a dog that's being dangerous under our municipal dog licensing um, uh, bylaw. Um, just kind of the basics overview of authority, what we're going to kind of hear tonight. Um, incident occurred on November 13th. Uh, we found out about the incident on November 26th. Uh, the appeal notice we received on no November 30th. And we've got the hearing tonight, which falls under the timeline set out in our bylaw. So all our timelines have been met. Um, when a dog has been deemed dangerous, uh, there's certain provisions that a dog owner must follow at all times in order uh, to comply with the bylaw. Um, so it is in your, uh, in your package, but I'll just go over it briefly. Um, so the dog is to be confined at all times in the dog owner's house. Uh, if it's outside of the house, um, it has to be in a fenced enclosure. Uh, purpose of that is to prevent children, um, unsupervised children, from accessing that dog. Um, when it's not in the fence or in the house, it has to be muzzled at all times. So if they're taken for a walk down the street, it has to be muzzled. Um, they need to carry a minimum $1 million public liability insurance policy. Um, this differs from your normal you know, homeowner's li uh, uh, liability insurance policy. Um, the town, we're named as a third party. So if the dog attacks another individual and we get called into, um, obviously, liability uh, concerns, then we can access that money as part of our defense or to pay out settlements, that sort of thing. Uh, microchip uh, is to be inserted in the dog so that uh, people who may catch the dog at some point will know that it has been deemed a dangerous dog. Um, signage uh, must be posted on the property say, stating that the property contains a dangerous dog. And if the owner happens to move or ownership of the dog transfers, then we're to be notified. So we know where this dog has the potential of being. Um, so powers of the committee are, um, based on the information you're going to hear in a couple of minutes, is you can either confirm the decision that the dog has been deemed dangerous. You can amend those provisions that I just listed. So you can add your own, take some out, modify the ones that are in there, or you could rescind the designation altogether. So that pretty much summarizes my intro. Questions for Terry? Know what our, what our responsibilities are? Okay. Thank you. Great. And then, uh, Pam, would you want to speak to uh, this as well? So, as Terry mentioned, the dog bit Mrs. Murray on the hand. She received several stitches. She was taken by ambulance to Palmerston Hospital to, to have her hand stitched. That happened on the 13th. We were not notified until the 20th that this had happened. So on the 22nd, I, I received a, a written statement from Mrs. Murray. Actually, was I was notified by her daughter-in-law, Joy, on the 20th. Um, received a written statement on the 22nd 
I spoke to public health about uh, asking for information on who the dog owners were, um, which I had to fill out a freedom of information form, ask for uh, the dog owners' names and, and uh, address, and it, if there was any previous history. So the information I received is the dog had bitten on May 10th of this year, another, another person leaving a puncture wound on the arm. According to the report, it's an un, it was an unprovoked attack. We don't have much information on that because they, they've taken out the, the name of the victim. So there, there's very little information on that one from the, from the 10th. It was not reported to the town because apparently public health doesn't give us that anymore. Um, so on the 26th, the letter was sent to uh, Ian and Joan Beauregard deeming the dog as dangerous. And then on the 30th, we were given the letter of appeal. They don't feel that the dog should be deemed dangerous. So, in the bylaw, a dangerous dog means a dog that, in the ab absence of any mitigating factor, has attacked, bitten, or caused, this comes right from the bylaw, has attacked, bitten, or caused injury to a person, <clears throat> or has demonstrated a propensity to, or propensity tendency or disposition to do so. Uh, means a dog that, in the, in the absence of any mitigating factor, has significant significantly injured a domestic animal or means a dog previously designated as potentially dangerous dog that is kept or permitted to be kept by its owner in violation of the requirements of such dog. So this dog has bitten twice. So mitigating factor from the bylaw means a circumstance which excuses express Ex aggressive behavior of a dog without limiting the generality of the foregoing may include circumstances where the dog was at the time of the aggressive behavior acting in the defense of an attack from a person or domestic animal. The dog was at the time of the aggressive behavior acting in defense of its young or reacting to a person or domestic animal trespassing on the property of its owner or the dog was at the time of the aggressive behavior being teased, provoked, or tormented. So due to the fact that this dog has bitten for a second time, bitten a person for the second time, this dog, uh, I feel the dog should be deemed as dangerous. Okay. And uh, the applicant want to question the file officer? That would be the person that is uh, feeling. Um, would you please little, come up and state your name in the mic and uh, and uh. my name is Ian Beauregard. I'm the owner of the dog. Um, the first time he bit somebody, he was defending his people. A lady, my son had him out in the driveway on his chain, and a lady from Crossroads Church wanted to talk to him, but he had earbuds in his while he had the dog out on the chain. And she went up and touched him on the shoulder and to grab him. And the dog bit her hand, grabbed her hand. And uh, I guess he felt that she was threatening him or something. He didn't hear her respond. Anyhow, she went to the hospital only because she had to have a tetanus shot the first time. And this, the second time, I don't know any of the circumstances with what happened the second time. I was not walking the dog. But... Um, we have since put signs on the house, and we have a muzzle for him, and he doesn't go out without the muzzle on on our property or anywhere else. I'm prepared to do all that, but he's not an aggressive dog. We do have a puppy in the house, which falls under that statement of young. The vet in Mild May, when we took him up there, said that the uh, he would be protecting the puppy if he thought the puppy was threatened. And like I said, I don't know what happened on the main street there. I wasn't walking the dog or even there. We got the call afterwards. But um, my understanding was that a hand was put towards the puppy, and that's why he lashed out. So I don't know if it's if it's aggressive or if he's protecting what he thinks is his, his puppy or the puppy in the house. 
So you've heard, you have nothing to ask the bylaw officer. I, I don't She's think so. stated how, yeah. how we get to yeah. this conclusion. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't. And you have somebody here, I assume, that's going to talk about the incident. That, yes, yeah. yes. I don't know. Um, I've never done this before or anything no. else. So I don't know what's involved either way with the outcome of this, but um, I, I just feel like it's kind of harsh. That's all. And I don't know. I've never even seen the, the bylaws or any of that stuff. So well, that's why we have the, this, so everybody gets yeah. to have all the okay. information. Um, so. I guess the question is, well, we'll go through the hearing and then we'll, through, we'll, yeah. Well, yeah, and then we'll okay. have some more opportunity. Thank you. Thanks. Um, questions from the council for either. Now we're going to hear about the incident, I believe, coming up. So this is for Cam right now. Yeah. Is there anything for Cam on the bylaw itself? Do you understand the the what he read? Yeah. Okay. Is, is, yeah. The, is it time sensitive? No, there's there's nothing that says it has to be done yesterday, kind of thing. But it's I don't know how to say it. It, it it's up to you guys to decide whether you deem the dog dangerous and it's up to you guys to decide and girls sorry to decide what measures you want to take if you do deem it dangerous and it's up to you to decide what measures you want to take to keep this from happening again and i and i think just if i add to it the way i heard it and read it before is if we don't do something because we've been notified that this is, and you've made this recommendation, and the dog does something later, we're liable as a town because we didn't follow <coughs> correct what what our bylaw officer said. So that's what you have to understand. So if you're you're taking that responsibility back onto the town liability. So just to let you know that is that right? Is that have I got yeah. that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Part. <coughs> Very unfortunate that the communications between <coughs> the health unit and the town. There wasn't any of that. It would have never happened in the first place. I don't know what the, 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 the hole is there, but uh, if we had known the first time, this would have happened. Well, I don't know if they've changed their rules, but I know in the past I've been notified that yes, a dog had bitten somebody and then we can move forward with it. But after receiving the email from Joy, um, I contacted Public Health and I was told I had to fill out a, a form for freedom through the Freedom of Information Act. So, yeah, and they used to. That's something we can look into, Mark, because I, I always thought it was the case, but um, it but used to be. It used to be, but maybe they've changed the rules on that. Thanks. So. Um, Thanks, Kim. Just hang around because we might need you. I get curling at eight. Just saying. <laughs> what did you say? I get curling at eight. Oh. <laughs> I heard that he said a hot date. Statement by the witness. And I have the victim, unfortunately, to come up and speak. Hey, Mark. Sit or stand. Oh, I'll be okay. um, I was on for my walk uh, on the main street, and I uh, was on my way coming back, and I saw the two girls and the two dogs coming down the street. And the closer I got to them, um, I stepped over to the curb to let them pass by, <coughs> and I was standing by a light post as well, and. Uh, when I, I kind of stood to the side, and then the dog, the furthest away from me, just came right across, and he grabbed me, bit my hand. And I said to the girls, I said, the dogs just bit me. And they wanted to see my hand, so I took my mitt off, and it had ripped it, the flap off the top. So uh, uh, they asked, the girls asked who they could phone for me, and which they did, and said they'd go across to the uh, firemen's because it was firemen's uh, practice that yeah. night. And I went and sat in the doorway because I was getting a bit oozy, and I fainted in the doorway. And then the policeman or the uh, firemen came over, 
and uh, I went off to hospital by ambulance, and the uh, my hand, the tendons were ripped, and there were stitches on the inside, and the flap had to be stitched back again. So and I brought a doctor's report. I didn't know if that well, was necessary. Well, I think if we need the doctor's report, but no. we have it. We can put it into evidence if we need to. Um, any questions for Mr. Taylor? And the app, I will, yeah, council and, and, and the applicant, do you want to uh, say anything about Ms. Murray's statement? Who, who was, who was, who was there that actually was walking the dog? So is that, okay, because maybe you, yeah, so if you would like to come up and, and state your name and, and, uh, Ms. Murray, do you want to just stay there for a oh, minute? All right, sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. In case she has questions for you. Uh, Caitlin White. Caitlin, okay. Um, so we were walking to the main street to throw out Pepper's poop because he had pooped. Oh, yeah. Yes. And there's no garbage cans on the side street. Right. So really, main street's the only place to go and do that. And we had rounded the corner, and then Joan was just kind of there. And Asher, the other dog, was jumping and excited. And she kind of, like, put her hand out. And then um, that's when Pepper came across um, towards Asher and then bit her on the hand. And then uh, when he did release her hand, he was sitting and listening to us to tell him to sit and wag his tail. Um, I gave Pepper's leash to Alyssa, and I told her to take him around the corner, and then I looked at Joan's hand and then went across the road to the fire department and asked for a first aid kit so they could come and stitch it up. Um, yeah. All right. So you're, you're saying that there was a motion? Well, like... It's kind of hard to describe. Like the dog came across, right? Yeah, because he was on my right side, because mm -hmm. that's my dominant hand. So to pull him back, I used my right hand. So he kind of cut across everyone. And then, because she was trying to, like, get around. So, but did Mrs. Murray move towards the dog, or, or did that happen so fast? It's hard to tell. Well, it, yeah, like it was hard to tell. Like Asher was jumping because he was excited to see someone, and and then Pepper went across, and I was trying okay, to. Pepper, pull I back. take it as the puppy, is it? Uh, Asher's, Asher's the puppy. Pepper's Asher's the, the puppy. Dog. So the puppy's oh. excited. Yeah. And and but the, it's the bigger, it's the other dog that bit. Yeah. I get those down. Okay. Any questions? I. Um, I would just like to point out too that. My cousin came to the Beauregard's house to do some home repairs, and Pepper had never met him before, and he didn't show any signs of aggression when uh, my cousin came to their house. But in your in your mind, was there any act of aggression towards the dog, or the dog just somehow decided to? to... Um, I think because like we rounded the corner, and then she was just kind of there. He was startled, and then with Asher's response to her being a, there. I, I assume it's a big dog. Mm, about knee height. Knee height? Yeah. Hard, hard to control? or No. Oh, that's a big fine. Yeah, I know. That'll be 50 bucks. Because <laughs> <laughs> even worse. Follow the ring. I'm trying to. Okay. Um, okay. Yes, Judy. Uh, so, just... Um, so, Mrs. Murray said she saw the dogs and the two girls coming, but then... Um, Caitlin, you're saying that like we didn't they were see there. her until we were literally right in front of each other because right. we kind of cut through the parking lot of the library. Okay. And she was um, like the building there where Noble's Tax Services used to yes. be. Yes. So we cut through the parking lot and then she was coming that way and then okay. we just like met at the corner of the building there. Mrs. Thanks. Murray, did you didn't did you didn't mention about putting your hand down or anything? Well, it happens fast. Fast, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not. That's I guess fine. You I understand that. Put your that. hand out if you're wanna yeah. protect yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? For the, and I think we're. Yep. Well, thanks. Thanks for you. Anything else to add? Hmm? Oh, sorry, Jean. Um, just a clarification in the report. I don't have it right here in front of me, but somebody talked about the hand being that you were advised to not pull your hand away from the dog. 
um, when I was pulling Tepper's leash back, like in towards me, I was saying, don't pull your hand away because I was going to pry his jaw open. Okay, so he didn't just nip and release. He had a hold of the hand. Mm -hmm. He wasn't going to let go. Well, Is he that... did, like after a second, well, but I wasn't sure if he was going to let go. Okay, because I was unclear when I was reading that. I'm thinking, okay, because your natural instinct would be to yeah, pull your hand yeah. back, obviously. There's yeah. a dog that's got a hold of it, a fairly large dog that you don't know. You're you're going to pull your hand back, which would understandably increase the damage. But, yeah. okay, I was just trying to get clear on how that occurred. Okay. Anything else to add? Thank you. We'd like to sit down. Yeah. Cam, can you do the summary ar argument, or where are you? Where is he gone? He went curling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> are you doing that, Terry? Yep. Okay. So I don't really have much to say. Things kind of explained uh, explain themselves. So again, it's uh, the decisions up to you to yeah, amend, confirm, or uh, uh, rescind the designation. Um, yeah, council or the committee needs to essentially satisfy themselves whether or not a mitigating factor was there, whether or not the dog should remain being deemed dangerous. Any thoughts to carry? A motion. I, I make a motion. Oh, Ian, did you want to do a summary? Or um, just... I guess. Um, I just was. Uh, I'm. He didn't attack her, and and the word attack is kind of vague in all this stuff. It's more grab a hand to say stop or whatever I, he didn't like maul her or attack her or anything it's and and it's really unfortunate that she got bit i mean if if joan or i were walking the dog it, we wouldn't have been in that situation caitlin and Alyssa took the dogs out for a walk with good intent and it's unfortunate that this that we're all here and and i regret that but um i think we've taken precautions now and we realize that this might be an issue but Dangerous dog is kind of, I, I, I see pit bulls attacking people and chewing legs off and stuff like that. And I don't think that's what we're at. So I'm, I'm asking you to consider middle ground somewhere. Yes, maybe we have a problem. We're working on the problem. But the dangerous dog designation, we don't have fences in Harrison and we don't have kennels in our backyard and stuff like that. And I'm not really interested in doing that right now. But if that's the case, I, I think um, I think we're we've got it nipped with a muzzle, and we've got signs up, and we've got insurance, and we've got all that stuff. We've taken all those precautions over years, but we're a dangerous dog is the, sort of the end of the line sort of thing, and we're just asking you to consider maybe not going that far. Thank you. Thanks. Um, anybody want to make any comments from before we have a vote? Um, so I agree with everyone who has said this is really unfortunate that, that it all came to this, and I have sympathy for uh, every one involved, including Pepper. Um, uh, I was wondering, though, um, Mr. Beauregard, can I ask any questions? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Um, so it sounds to me like you've you already have met all the requirements of the dangerous dog designation except for the fenced in yard. Is that fenced in yard and the, the microchip? Okay, thank you. We have a muzzle and we have yeah. all that stuff. Okay, that thanks. Gary, did you want to? Uh, just for clarification, um, the insurance policy that a typical person carries doesn't include third party liability. So chances are the insurance that they have. I would be surprised being I've seen this before wouldn't comply with the provisions of these by this bylaw so you may have to get an updated policy you may have to get a rider yeah, yeah. on this yeah Pam? so you have to come up because we're on we're on television and all that stuff <laughs> just a clarification on like Ian said 
the dog didn't attack. It's the dangerous dog designation is not just because it attacked the person. It's also bitten or caused injury. Hmm. So the other question is, when did the muzzle come in? I know there's signs on the house, and yes, the letter says there's a muzzle, but when was when did the signs go up, and when did the muzzle? Is that after the first one? Is that after this one? the second one? Or is that, did the muzzle just come in because of Mrs. Murray being bitten? I don't know. Ian, did you have, did you want to answer that? Did, did you have the muzzle in the... And the, we uh, bought them after this. After, okay. So we, you, 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 I thought we you got said the letter, that. we wanted to comply yeah. basically with the letter, but yeah. we wanted to argue yeah. the some of the other stuff. issues. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just I have a, so in there it says I don't think it's necessarily saying that you have to put a fence up. Does it not say that it's confined within the owner's dwelling? Was outside the dwelling it needs to be muzzled? So I don't think we're asking to put a fence up, correct? Correct. It could be like a, a normal dog chain, but then when the dog's unsupervised outside, it would have to have the muzzle on at all times. Yep. Are we, are we, do you want to speak to that? Or it needs to be in a fence in an enclosure yeah. that children can't, can't get access. to. Right. Okay. So a chain doesn't necessarily work there. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. So I, I, I look at this as um, it's really a sad, sad day for the puppy. Um, but I, I can't help but think if we don't do something, and I know that you've taken precautions, Ian, um, if the puppy gets out again and does more damage, and that's possible, then where do we stand then? Um, it could be it could be a more dangerous uh, something. Um, when we're talking a fence, uh, Terry, is is an eight by eight by uh, four feet high? Is that a fence, uh, or does the whole backyard have to be fenced? No, it has to be a humane enclosure, so something that the dog has sufficient room to move to exercise. Um, it, but it depends to you know, is it just the dog staying out there like for a half an hour and they're taking it for walks, or is that where it's you know fenced all day? So that would depict what size it would have to be. Um, height wise, I would. Definitely say more than four feet high, just being children can reach over it. Um, but there isn't anything specific that says this is how big, how high it's got to be. So, is the dog typically outside all day? No, no. It's in the house. He's eight years old. And then when he goes outside, he's on a chain? On a chain. And with someone with him now. And somebody's with them all yeah. the time. Okay, thank you. Okay, but what you're saying, I think, Terry, is it has to be satisfactory. However they work it out, whether it's the chain or whether it's a fence, has to be satisfactory to you and the and Cam as for the bio officer to make sure that you put the proper precautions in. Do you understand that? Yeah. You'd have to work with, with our department on that. And so that's, that's where we'd be going at this point in time. Okay. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's you know, we we don't get into what kind of fence it has to be and all that. That can be worked out with with mm -hmm. our bylaw and our, our building department. If it needs to be a fence, if you have other precautions or whatever you're doing, but we can work that out. So I think what what we've got to deal with tonight is whether we accept our staff's recommendation that it is deemed a dangerous dog and these these restrictions have to be put on, or we modify the restrictions in some way. Again, taking some of that responsibility back onto this council and and the town. Um, so, yeah, okay, that's the ring. Okay, okay, one of the three. Here's, here's, okay, I just said it, didn't I? Yeah, you did. All right, okay, so number one, we leave the confirm, confirm the designation. All in favor of that? Yeah. And, Oh yeah, sorry. Moving a second. No, I'm moving. David, second Gene. All in favor of that motion? Count it up. We got oh, unanimous, was it? One, two, three. Yep. Okay. So we're at that point, Ian. Uh, we deem the dog at this point dangerous, and you can work with our file officer to hopefully come up with those uh, those restrictions. Thank you for coming today, and. Uh,
we'll go from there. Okay. Yes. So I said the most. I yeah. So um, yeah, we'll adjourn this uh, this portion of the meeting. Uh, can I have a mover and a seconder to adjourn? Yeah, Councilor Johnson and Councilor Turton, all in favor? Or Deputy Mayor Turton, we'll take this. It'll take a while, Mayor Bridge. Okay. Delegations. Where's Luke? Is he here? I don't see him. <laughs> well, they may be outside. Oh, those are always tough. I had to put, I had to put a dog down myself. I had to put a dog down. I two feet all and I had to put him down five years old. Worst time I ever had much. I couldn't trust him. Luke, welcome. Taylor, you on this too? Okay. All right. Our delegation tonight is. Uh, giving us an update on a very successful farmer's market and uh, Luke, if you want to go through it that'd be great. Thanks George. Uh, congrats to the new faces in council. I look forward to working with you. Um, so yeah we are here uh, to talk about the, the recap from this year's um, Minto farmer's market. Uh, we had a pretty successful year I'd say. Um, we uh, run from June to the end of August, uh, located at the uh, train station there in Palmerston. Uh, so uh, there was 13 vendors in 2017, and that grew to 17 in 2018. We expanded our social social media presence, much to uh, Taylor riding rain on that, uh, <laughs> which is great. And we went through a lot of website updates, which was good. Um, we uh, had uh, have an initiative. That we collaborate with the uh, Wellington County Social Services through Market Box, and uh, that program we feel has been fairly successful. Um, it brings a lot of new faces to the market, and you see more every year, um, which is great. Um, so it, it's been running since 2016. Uh, individuals are able to get Market Box to spend at the market, uh, and uh, so it it, uh, it helps bring new people to the market, and in turn we as vendors get. Uh, a benefit from them coming there. Uh, this year, I guess we generated in total over a thousand market bucks from everyone. Um, and if anyone wants market bucks, contact Taylor. Good stocking stuffer. Yep. That's right. Uh, events. We try to run uh, events to uh, help draw some more people out to the market. Um, so certain ones to highlight would be a strawberry social day to highlight the strawberry. Uh, harvest uh, and hand car races kind of tied into that day, if I remember correctly. Uh, we had a family day and breakfast, a library day. Uh, we um, also do a, a collaboration with the Palmerston Fair where we have a uh, corn roast to help fundraise for the market and a corn eating contest. Um, so, counselors in 19, you are encouraged. I, I just on that, I would like to have like a seniors category. I can't keep up with the young ones. <laughs> And if you I, get enough seniors to make a category, we'll, all right, we'll, well make I'll a category for that. you. <laughs> we'll leave that in your hands, George. Yeah. And, and the cobs are too big. Yeah, well, it was a good year for corn, good I guess. Year for corn. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, this year it was the first time we did a, a special fall market, which tied into the uh, culture mm -hmm. days. And uh, I think that went over quite well. It was, uh, it was well attended, so the plan is to do it again in, in 19. So, uh, do you have anything to add, Taylor? Um, I guess just quickly. Um, oh yes, for the uh, for the breakfast um, that's put on by the Carry On Women's Institute, and I think it's either, it's either been three or four years um, that they've been putting on that breakfast. So that's been great to collaborate with them since it kind of, which is a good thing, it grew um, kind of too much for the vendors to handle since they're obviously busy selling their produce and everything. Um, so that's been really great partnership with them. And I guess we'll put a plug in for our trivia night. Mm -hmm. So those are the two fundraisers that uh, the farmer's market puts on. Luke uh, is the <laughs> spearhead of that. And it's a really, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Friday, February 1st and Friday, March 8th. 
um, from 8 to 10 at the Palmerston Legion. So um, we'll be putting that on Facebook and doing some promotions around that. So if anyone wants to come, it's a lot of fun. Are they teams? The teams? Yes, yep, teams. Maybe we get a council team in one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We got some pretty smart people up here, you know. Yeah. Done well. <laughs> you know we don't want to show that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, so I know there's lots. We just thought we'd do a quick little update. I know it's a busy night for council. Welcome to all the new counselors. Um, and I just want to thank, especially Luke and Crystal. They are the leads of the Palmerston Farmers Market or Minto Farmers Market. So without them, it definitely wouldn't be near as successful. So thank you. Um, and we also have a really great committee with everyone eager to stay on the committee and longtime vendors. So for me, that's been a real joy seeing that, um, commitment long term and thank you very much Judy for sitting on that committee um, for the past couple of years. Great. And yeah, I guess there's one more thing to add. Like we have a really like we help Taylor's a big help. She does a lot of our uh, meetings and stuff for the uh, putting things together. You know, the town is very supportive, which is which is excellent. And we have a really good core group of people coming because you know it's important to have that repetitiveness and people knowing things count on people to be there, even maybe a or a day from weather-wise. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, do you guys have any questions at all? Jeannie? Well, I was I was going to say, but you've already said it. Um, it it's been great to sit on the uh, Farmers Market Committee. It's a very engaged and passionate group, and uh, their mm -hmm. business is increasing. So, congratulations. Yeah, it, it's a well-run market, and not only that, it adds value to our our uh, museum, our railway museum. Mm -hmm. We work well with you on that, and. And, uh, I tried to get there. I almost got my card filled out. I, I think I could have had it filled out, but I missed it. I'm bringing it a couple of times, but next year I'll get it filled out. But there's a little card if you go so many times, you, yeah. you know. Loyalty cards. Loyalty yeah. cards. And there's yeah. always a draw. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's always a draw. Yeah, and, draws. uh, you know, it's, it's great to see all the local vendors and that's what it's all about. And, uh, Luke is, uh, I have to say without you there, I think Taylor would say, mm -hmm. uh, without you there and without your guidance, uh, that market and and uh, Mike when you first started it the two of you um, that's why it's there I mean you you're the one that uh, has the glue to the whole thing and I hope you're coming back I assume so you wouldn't be here so <laughs> <Just plan. laughs> anyway so, um, and you know and and Luke isn't right in our town he's just on the edge we want to take over that part but uh, North Perth <laughs> keeps, so North Perth keeps putting up roadblocks and stuff yeah, but maybe characters yeah they're characters but <laughs> uh, if you get a chance to go to Luke's farm, he does a lot of neat things too with his uh, October uh, pumpkin fest. Uh, pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and I haven't made it out yet, but uh, I hear great things. So keep up the good work, everybody. Thank you. Perfect. Oh, and I'll add the uh, opening market will be on June eighth of twenty nineteen. So we'll see you there. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Public question period. Okay. Correspondence. We got, where's our, we got one for correspondence. So, just a motion on the correspondence. Do we have a lot on there? Does anybody want to pull anything? Yeah, Mayor Bridge, never, I think Mr. Uh, Clark or uh, Minister of Municipal Affairs is really, uh, he had three very good letters there, and I think likely we should try and respond to them. Yes. He, he wants us to give him some input. And one of the things that I remember us asking is less reporting. Yes. It's one of the ones that he has said they're going to try and streamline that and make less reporting. So I think that's good. So we should respond to two of the three there. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. Does anybody else agree to that? We'll respond. And um, who's all going to Roma? Right. Well, I, we don't have a delegation to them, but, I, but we'll have an opportunity, I'm sure, to, to talk to some people down there too. Um, and this is something that AMO is taking on and Rome is taking on. It's, we're not alone in it, but uh, I'm looking forward if we can get down from how many reports do we do, Gord? Uh, AMO figure 270. 270 reports yeah. that we do for the two levels of government. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, Mr. Clark, Minister Clark has said, let's get that down. So we'll keep him. It looks like he's trying to get there. So um, we see keeping bills out. Yes. Yeah, the, um, actually, that's a, a real push for this um, this entire government. I've been party to some uh, mm -hmm. meetings with the Agriculture Minister yep. too, and and if you can uh, 
give them some ideas. If you can give them some ideas, any any minister some ideas on cutting red tape. That's a that's a real theme song of theirs right now. Um, I guess the big thing is we have to be careful about cutting too much red tape because some red tape is in place for good reason. So it's a balance, right? No, it's good. Um, on a different issue, yep. um, the resolutions about the voters list. Yes. I don't know whether we want to support that. No, Ken Lean doesn't want to work. In group. I wasn't involved, but I know we had lots of issues with it. But um, I can speak to that. Yeah, you can speak to that, Annalyn. And and by the way, a great job on the election. I know. I know a lot of people give you a heartburn on yeah. the voters list, but it's not. You don't make that up. We don't make the list. Impact makes the list. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where. Um, if they're going to be able to do better. I know that we're looking at plans in place for the next election um, to engage our citizens uh, a little better in order to make sure that we get our list um, as best as possible. Um, and that may be even uh, doing a bit of door-to-door -door with uh, some of our larger residential areas and also working with the county itself on some of their uh, county housing in order to get the list of names for that. So we do have plans in place. Um, I know that MPAC does what they can. It's not their main job, absolutely. And so hopefully um, in the next election, there will be better information coming forward. And one of the things that just pointed out, one of the biggest problems they have with MPAC is they, they base it off people that own houses. That's right. And, so and they, they, don't, they, they used to track uh, renters. They no longer yeah, do that. They don't do that anymore. That's right. And, and that's the biggest problem we had was any rentals that people would have. I mean, they just there's no way of getting them with impact. So Yeah, that's so correct. So everybody's going to have to kind of figure that out. And it's also it's, it's up to the residents. I mean, and that's hard. It's up to the residents to make sure that they are on. We'll try to get that information out to them a little better uh, and give them a lot more opportunities to be able to get onto the list and to check to make sure that they're on the list for uh, sure. Thank you. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Anything else? Can I have somebody move the correspondence? Yeah. Um, sorry, can we have oh. a motion first for you want to ask to do something with the uh, even Clark ones. Clark? Yeah. Yes. Oh yes. Motion, motion to uh, respond to the to the Clark ones. And I have that's yeah, I'll make that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Turton, Councillor Elliott, all mm -hmm. in favor? Okay. Good. Yeah, one, and we need one for the rest of the correspondence. I could do that. Councillor Elliott, help you out. Councillor Anderson, all in favor? <laughs> We're getting you. You know, you're allowed to put your hand up. You know? I, I mean. I, I'm going to wait till somebody puts their hand up. I'm not going to just. Uh, he had a hand. Did you just put your hand up? Oh yeah, I did. I was looking this way because they're they're kind of slow over the side. All right, where are we? Right. Going? We always try trust and truth. We need a wand. We need a wand. here. Culture round table. Yes, I don't have anything to add or highlight in the minute. So unless there's any questions, I'll keep things rolling along. Got a girl. Anything on the couch? I other than a great job or. Yeah, you'll see we uh, lost quite a few members for various reasons, but uh, when January 8th, the appointment bylaw comes forward, you'll see we've replaced all of those people, so it'll be nice uh, fresh blood and new ideas coming forward, but mm -hmm. other than that, there's not much else to report from that meeting. Thank you. Motion to accept that one. Councillor Anderson, Councillor Elliott, all in favor? <laughs> all the heavy lifting. Linda, if you want to make, uh, we got your report. Do you want to speak to it or do you just, it's up there. Uh, this is the report that we, on quality homes, that we wanted to uh, bring back. Um, I think Linda's done an excellent job on it. And uh, I think all our concerns are, on the zoning issues, definitely are been looked after. I don't know if anybody has any comments or questions for Linda. I don't have anything further to add. No, I think, I think I just the report to the pretty well stems that were raised. Yeah. And also the applicant has made uh, a change and is not requesting the setback any further, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a motion to accept the report. Councillor Elliott, Councillor McKenzie, all in favor? Great, thank you. Okay. Building okay. assistant. Okay. We're into severances. And we have Michelle. Yes, we do. We have five reports for Michelle. I know. I know. You're busy. It's here for Michelle. A busy day. A little bit. Okay. 
so through your average, we have the first severance application for the subject property municipally known as 410 Victoria Street. This is being requested in order to reconfigure the lot to legally split the two parts of the parcel into two separate lots with distinct and separate ownership. It is zoned R2, which is medium density residential. And the semi-detached dwelling is currently under construction and meets all of the minimum lot area frontage setback requirements for R2 zone. The county has provided comment and that is attached and the proposed use maintains the general intent and purpose of the official plan and zoning bylaw. So staff in the building department and public works department met to review the application and we have no concerns with the subject property, providing that our standard um, conditions addressing financial, parkland and servicing requirements are met. Any questions? No, it's pretty straightforward. Very straightforward. A motion to accept the report. Recommendation, I mean. Or oh, you want me to read the recommendation? Yeah, no, no, I should be reading the recommendations, but it's a long one. Short. Are we all right? Are you good with the recommendation, everyone? It's up there. Okay. Thank you. Um, and uh, Councillor Elliott, who was, was the seconder? All in favor? Joe, moving on. Thank you. So the next severance report number two is a surplus farm dwelling application before the County Wellington Land Division and it is to sever 98.3 acre parcel and the this will create a retained 2.8 acre parcel with an existing dwelling and shed. The property is currently zoned agricultural and natural environment and the proposed retained residential lot meets the minimum frontage and lot area requirements <coughs> and the existing shed was assessed and deemed to be in compliance with our zoning bylaw so no further zoning requirements on our part will be requested. The, co the county has provided comment and they wanted us to note, you can see from the, the picture hopefully, that basically the routine, the uh, severed parcel, they looked and made a bit of a, a nice rectangular mm -hmm. shaped parcel that also takes into account some agricultural land, so land vision recommendation. They just wanted you to note that they may ask for a reconfiguration similar right. to another possibility that we are in support regardless. Mm -hmm. And, and which side? Which side is that? Is that over where I see it? There's more. There's more land going on the left side. If I look on the screen, right? Yeah. So when you see the the grass area, it's also yeah. taking over. Right. Yeah. Parcel okay. The um. I think it works out exactly, but maybe an extra acre there. Mm -hmm. So the other thing was that the county will also be requesting for a zoning amendment to take place to ensure that no. A uh, residential drawing will be done on the <coughs> parcel. So right. you will see this report come back forward again for that purpose. Otherwise, we also met and we had no concerns on our part, providing that these standard conditions will be met yeah. as well for drainage assessment and there will be required another access. Question for Mark. I heard you right. The separate part is not eligible for another residential separate. That's separate. Right, that's right. So okay. it'll come back to be rezoned to restrict that. And just on that, usually at Land Division, they like to keep as much farmland in play as possible. <coughs> so that's why they may, may go a little bit about. Mm -hmm. So although the request is to make a nice, like, nice straight one, yeah. it may be reconfigured. They may reconfigure. When we come back, rezone this. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Mover? Happy Mayor Faulkner? Oh, I was going to say it once today. Stop <laughs> 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 to say it once. once. And <laughs> Councillor Dirksen? Yeah, he does <laughs> look a bit like Ron. All in favor? Thank you. Both have glasses. I, I knew I'd, I'd do it once. <laughs> have I done it twice? Have I really? Oh, three times I quit. <laughs> it's okay. Not only count, ex Councillor Mary Lou Caldwell's out there, I almost called her name twice, too. She's out in the audience tonight. So. Okay. Yeah, anyways, next up. So our third severance proposed tonight is for a lot line adjustment. So this application will sever approximately 0.66 acres of land and merge it with the abutting rural residential parcel. The proposed retained parcel uh, will be approximately 32.9 acres and contains a single detached uh, dwelling. The purpose, sorry, the severed parcel will add additional land to the property municipally known as 5862. 11th line and that will help to create a rectangular shaped corner lot and the purchaser will take title to the southern land in the same manner as they will be abutting lands. So I think the diagram on there probably mm -hmm. serves its purpose best. It is zoned agricultural and natural environment and the proposed severed lot is zoned agricultural and the 
the corner piece and <coughs> in agricultural use. So both areas will remain the same. County has provided comment and the proposed use maintains the general intent and purpose of the official plan and zoning bylaw. And again, our department's met and we have no concerns providing that the um, financial and drainage assessment. There are both properties already have access. Okay, there's your recommendation. Councillor McKenzie. So my question again, if that lot is, would that be eligible for another severance? Well, those two pieces um, where the smaller house is, is going to, to merge. The other house already has a, a piece on it as, and the intended use is to remain the same. There is no so other no. request to put that forward. But they could, right? Well, we Pardon just, me? we've just taken the severance to put the two pieces together. I don't believe somebody would come forward with that, but that request is not on the table. And that would have to go through the whole process, Mark. Yep. Yeah. I realize that it's just big enough to do the mm -hmm. Sometime down the road, it's big enough to do the uh, That Linda, parcel, you want to sorry. Uh, Linda might speak no. to that. I, 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 I know what Land Division would say. Well, is it, is it designated it's primate? primate? It's primate. So yeah. under the primate policies, a residential lot would not be yeah. permitted. That's what I thought. So they would not be able to further sever it. Yeah. It's pretty final. Thanks. Good question. Okay. Um, do you want to move that one? Moved by uh, Councillor McKenzie. Second by Councillor Elliott. All in favor? Get you in there, Jeff. I'll get you. Okay. Next one. So our last severance. <laughs> Our application for, for the County of Wellington Land Division is to sever approximately 1.73 <laughs> <excuse me, laughs> acres of rural residential lot, creating a 24.2 acre parcel to be retained with the existing barn, shed, and residential dwelling. The proposed severed parcel will create a vacant lot with the intention to build a new residential dwelling on it and will require access. The existing barn was also assessed for MDS compliance and all setbacks meet the required minimum distances. This land is currently zoned agricultural and natural environment and meets the minimum lot area and frontage requirements. County has provided comment and they are in support of the severance. Staff and building department and public works also met to review and have no concerns regarding the application providing that financial drainage assessment and access requirements are met. Questions? Just make a comment when you look at that map and you see all that water over there. That's all those those kettle lakes that are in there. Yep. You, you know a couple of them are there. I didn't realize there's that many kettle lakes around. Like that. Um, quite amazing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, has somebody moved that? Councillor Johnson and Councillor Elliott. All in favor? Thank you. Well done, Michelle. We have one more. Oh, you have one more. Have I one thought more. you said that was your last oh, one. That's the last severance. Oh, I see. Now you have part lot control. Part lot control. Okay, so yeah. something not so completely different. Yep. But the subject property that we these are all along George Street, and we've mm -hmm. had several of these come forward. It contains a semi-detached home, and it's proposed to be separated into two separate parcels. Permits and construction have begun, and all in accordance with the approved building setbacks for the R2 FF. Blood fringe, sorry, one zone, and the lots were serviced during the George Street reconstruction in 2015. The request is for council to adopt a bylaw to remove part lot control to allow the reconfiguration of the lots and legally split the parcel into two separate lots with distinct and separate ownership. Housekeeping. Housekeeping, really. yep. yep. I'll move that. Moved by Deputy Mayor Turton and seconded by Councillor Anderson. All in favor? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now you can sit down. I think it's just I feel like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. And I can have uh, Linda come back up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You said Belinda, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you're up. <laughs> did, I, did I say Linda? You are Belinda. You well, Belinda, Linda, we are not Oh, sure. Belinda, I said Belinda. Ready to uh, uh, I thank you. Thank you, Ron. I, I think <laughs> I said Belinda. <laughs> so, again, this is a pretty quick uh, item. Uh, Grandpa Scott's is the newest restaurant in Palmerston, and they've come mm -hmm. forward with a signage grant request. And luckily, we had a little bit 
have money left in this budget for uh, 2018. <coughs> uh, we have confirmed that the main sign there is not backlit. That's one of our things in our signage grant policy is that we don't fund backlit signs. So that is good to go. And uh, yeah, so my recommendation is that uh, we approve this for a thousand dollars. Questions? Sure. You're moving it? I have no questions. I was okay. going to move it. All right. Councilman Dirksen, Deputy Mayor Dirksen, all in favor? Good. Thank you for me. Next. <laughs> Go right in. I'm still up. <laughs> Ready? Bang the table. Bang the table. Bang the table. Okay. So this is kind of an exciting night uh, for us. Um, back in the fall, we had uh, representatives from Bang the Table uh, attend our Economic Development Committee. So those councillors that sit on that committee will have remembered this. Um, basically, it's a way for us to engage the community in uh, initiatives that we're working on. And uh, as we know, a lot of people don't come out to public meetings. We have a budget meeting and nobody shows up or one person shows up. And a lot of people are busy, especially a younger demographic. And this is one way we feel we can reach out to these people and get people's feedback on things. So, um, yeah, you can do all kinds of things. It's basically taking a public meeting online. So people can do a poll, they can answer survey questions, they can have an idea generation session. Uh, have a discussion. There's all kinds of things that you can do with this platform. There's eight different tools. And um, as you can see, this is our logo. Engagemento is um, engagemento.ca will be the website. Our first big project is kicking off tomorrow. Um, we will be opening up a survey for our cannabis. Uh, so we can see if people want us to opt in, opt out, or if they're undecided. So it's really exciting to see what uh, is going to come out of that. Taylor, Matt, and I have all been trained on this platform. Taylor's going to be the main person, being that she's our marketing person. So when you see the site go live tomorrow, she's been responsible for uh, making sure that all looks great. You'll also notice tomorrow that we have two other projects that are going on. With One will be a staff shout-out section. So if people see staff that are doing good things, uh, give a shout out because that's always nice. And um, another one is the Clifford Street Party. So Clifford never got to have a big brand opening of their street because it ended so late in the year. And uh, so that event is likely going to be June 8th and we're looking for the community to give us ideas on what they want to see as part of that celebration. So um, other key things I guess that are important with this is people do need to register. So they have a screen name, we get their user, like their real name, first and last, which community they're from, and their ages so then we can have some demographic there's a lot of analytical tools on the back end so we can get a sense of who's responding who's participating um, this does not take away from the public in-person meetings we will still continue to do those this just allows us another opportunity to get feedback from the community uh, another interesting thing is that bang the table moderates this so there is a policy and if if people are not abiding by that policy, bang the table will remove that and they will contact the person to let them know what part of the policy they went against and why it was removed. So that kind of takes it out of our hands so people can't say that we didn't like what they said so they removed it. If there's uh, offensive language or attacking staff personally, uh, that is uh, not going to be kept on there and that will be monitored by them. And I think, um, oh yeah, so under the financial stuff, this platform is about $7,500. It is going to be split between mostly uh, admin, recreation, and economic development because these are the main departments we feel are going to use it. Uh, we can use it for asset management uh, consultation and there is funding available for that correct board. Um, once we get to the recreation master plan, uh, the budget, there's like so many things that we can use to engage people on. So we think this is a good investment and more and more communities in our area are jumping on this platform. So I'm pretty excited. Any questions? Good luck. <coughs> so good get on there tomorrow, yeah, everyone, yep. and get on cast your votes. Yep. Opt in or opt out. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah. Motion. Can we have a motion to accept that? Deputy Mayor Turton has been pretty busy. <laughs> Councillor Gunson, all in favor? <laughs> the girls are waving down there. Waving down. Oh, I'm trying to get some balance. I finally got to in there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. And we got Matt up here. Hey, yeah. Matt. 
Thank you, Mayor Bridge. I hope you'll opt in for these next three agreements. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm in favor. <laughs> See, I couldn't help myself. So, thank you, Mayor Bridge. Uh, we have three bylaw agreements attached for your consideration. All three are for five years. Um, Clifford and Harrison horticultural agreements are identical. Um, they contain the same provisions as the previous agreements that expire at the end of this month. And I just want to say, with regards to the two horticultural societies and the Clifford Church, uh, we've got a good working relationship with all three, and I look forward to the next five years has to bring. Questions on the agreement? Uh, is there any reason why they're not just the length of the council term rather than going uh, over? Through Mayor Bridge, we, we, um, we did do that in 2014 with a number of agreements, so there's about four or five more that I need to bring to your attention in January. So we thought here that we would go five. So essentially, first year into the new council, um, after the next election, we'll, we'll, we'll do a year and then bring them up a year in. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and just to point out, we've, we've done a lot of work on these agreements. Or at one time, everybody had a different agreement in every little town. So we've, we've made them all similar now. So they're basically, that's the nice thing. And when you see the next five come up, you'll see the same thing. I think the curling clubs and all the other things. So it took us a while to get everybody on the same page because everybody had agreements that were coming due at different times. So. Yeah, and it, it's been good to just get everyone on the same schedule. And, and consistency has been, been good as well so that no one feels like they're being treated differently than, right. than someone else. Uh, just just in the churches, and maybe Terry could help with the, that, is do we have to be zoned institutional for the church to be able to operate out of that, or can they can they operate out of a commercial? Is this out of sorry the community center? Yeah. Um, sorry, the community centers are zoned institutional, uh, which permits a uh, yeah a church facility as well as uh, community centers. Sure. Thanks. Uh, oh, I've got a recommendation there. Aren't I? Yeah, there's one recommendation for all three, uh, and I'm looking down at this side. Recommendation. <laughs> the council receives a November 23, 2018 report for the recreational services manager entitled agreements, and the council considers bylaws authorizing the mayor and the clerk to sign these agreements. And Councillor Dirksen and Councillor Anderson, all in favor? There they go. Thank you. Deputy Clerk. Expose meetings. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. It's a pretty simple report. I, the county has told us that they have again uh, contracted. Um, oh, sorry. A proposed meeting investigator, uh, John Maddox. Um, the financial considerations that we are only responsible for the fees if an investigation is instigated. Uh, we have not had one thus far and knock on wood will keep that way. Um, his hourly fee is 150 but the county pays the annual retainer of $1,000 on our behalf. Questions? Uh, the council receives the December 9th, 2016 report regarding the proposed meeting investigator appointment from the deputy clerk. Appoints That should be uh, received December 9th. Oh, sorry. Yes, I should have said 2018. 2018, I would hope. I'm going to go back in time here. Uh, appointment with Deputy Clerk and appoints Mr. John Maddox, JKM Consulting, as the Town of Mendo's closed meeting investigator for four-year term from December 1st, 2018 to December 1st, 2022. Staff? Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Elliott. All in favor? Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Cannabis. And I have uh, Wynn who's going to do this. And everybody had a chance to read this nine page report. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, no, I know. You don't have to be sorry. <laughs> There's a lot to put in that report, and you've done an excellent job. Mm -hmm. I know it was long. Yep. All right. So. You can do the highlights. Took a lot of research. Yeah. Yeah, no, I got it. <laughs> Every line right. is highlighted. <laughs> They're highlighted. That's why I said so. So uh, the first thing that I want to make clear is that uh, there will be probably 
well, there'll be this report and then a public meeting and then a report on the 22nd. The goal of these reports is just to give you as much information as possible regarding cannabis and the legislation, but I'm not trying to sway you in any way. The decision is going to be yours. We're not making any recommendations. It's going to be totally up to you. So, um, I spent, you can see it says November 19th, so I spent like a month writing this report. It got approved on Thursday and then all the rules changed again. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I'm just going to keep you as up to date as I can Moving over the target. next month. So um, you can see basically the rules for cannabis are they're going to follow the Smoke Free Ontario Act. So anywhere you can smoke tobacco at this moment, you can smoke cannabis. Um, the goal is to... Um, reduce that a little bit using a bylaw probably next year. Um, our new CAO went to a meeting and all of the municipalities in the county are going to get together and try to come up with a similar bylaw so that it's easy for the OPP to enforce them. So um, in terms of your role, so if the town chooses to opt in and allow retail locations, there will be no licenses um, approved by the AGCO without a 15-day comment period. So your 15-day period begins when the application is received and the applicant is made to post a notice on the store front that they wish to open their store in. Um, and it'll also be posted on the AGCO website. They, it is encouraged that these people speak to the municipality before they put in their applications, but it's not required. It's also not required by AGCO to notify us of these applications. So it's up to town staff to make sure that they are constantly monitoring monitoring the AGCO website. Uh, once this 15-day period starts, the town, the county, and the public can submit comments, but their comments have to be based on the three areas of public interest, including uh, related to public health and safety, protecting youth and restricting their access to cannabis, and preventing illegal activity. If comments are received the applicant has 15 days to respond, and then AGCO makes their decision. Uh, so another big question that a lot of people had is planning and the restrictions that we can place on these stores through planning. So under Section 42 of the Cannabis Statute Law, our authority to pass a bylaw under Sections 34, 38, or 41, so zoning, interim control, and site plan approval, um, are null and void. And any bylaws that we've already passed are also <laughs> voided. So we have no say. We cannot prevent the sale of cannabis from a retail operation using any of those three sections of the Planning Act. We can't determine the difference between a retail store selling cannabis and a retail store selling anything else. So anywhere that you're allowed to have a retail operation, you're allowed to have a retail cannabis operation. <coughs> the only restriction is a 150 meter buffer zone from schools, which only matters in Harrison and Palmerston because that's the only place there are schools. And I did do a buffer zone on the county um, SGIS, so it doesn't matter in Harrison, Alora Street, where all of our retail shops are, is more than 150 meters from Mitchell Clifford, so that doesn't matter. And it's same in Palmerston, it's more than 150 meters from Palmerston Public. There's a very small <coughs> section of Main Street in Palmerston that is 150 meters from Norwell, but that's not anywhere like in the actual downtown core, and Clifford doesn't have a educational institute. Um, there are three licenses that are required to open a retail store, so it's a pretty extensive process. Um, they go through all sorts of testing and licensing, and it's a really expensive process to even apply for these. Um, and the last one that Bill said was going to be a big thing was zoning and the idea that we already have Krasinski Enterprises in the Palmerston Industrial Park, and that their zoning allows for an accessory structure through which they can sell their products. <coughs> However, Krasinski Enterprises is a medical cannabis producer, so they're licensed by Health Canada, not the AGCO, and they have far more stringent security requirements than your typical retail store. If you're purchasing medicinal cannabis, you must purchase it by mail, phone, or online. You can't walk into a store and purchase it, so they can't sell it there anyway. So, um, just to go over then the process that we're thinking, uh, staff recommends hosting a public meeting on January 8th. The idea is that you'll have your regular council meeting here, we'll take a break, go into the Harrison Community Center and start our public meeting there, so just in case there's quite a few people. This will allow all of your ratepayers to have their say. 
Um, we'll have the OPP inspector, Scott Lawson, there to deal with any uh, legal issues and give feedback. He was at our October 2nd council meeting and he did a very good job with that. Um, we also wanted to have Wellington, Dufferin, Guelph Public Health to offer their point of view. Um, and yeah. So we'll also be using Bang the Table, as Belinda mentioned. The idea for that is to launch it tomorrow, as she said, and then have it close, the cannabis part of it anyway, on January 9th, right after the public meeting, so that we have time to compile all of the data for the 22nd meeting. We'll bring back another report outlining all of the information, all of the statistics based on what people have said they want, and it'll be up to you to approve or deny, opt in or opt out. Um, I will be able to tell you by them, because it is the very last day, what the majority of municipalities in Ontario and in the county have done. I can tell you, as of right now, Senator Wellington and Erin have opted out and Guelph has opted in. Um, right before the meeting, I checked and AGCO had heard from 27 municipalities throughout Ontario and only nine of them opted out. The other 18 all opted in. So that's about 33%. And then, as I said, the rules changed again. So it used to be that you would just, as of April 1st, you could open a store as long as your application was approved. But they've decided now, as of last Thursday, to cap the number of stores opening in April at 25. That'll be seven in southwestern Ontario. And in order to apply under the lottery, you have to have a population of 50,000 or more. So we won't get one anyway. <laughs> So that's new. What are we that's doing this 50, exercise That's just for? brand new off the press and they need, okay. Yep. So, <laughs> so what do we have to do? Great report, you Quinn. You still have to opt in or opt out. Yeah, you still have to do it. Oh, yeah, you still have to do it, but I'm just saying. That, yeah. Um, yeah, and the other important thing to note with that is if you opt in, you're in for good. If you opt out, you will be given a chance to opt in again later, but you won't receive any of the per household funding to help <laughs> with enforcement. So, any questions? <laughs> Where do you start? <laughs> well, on the report, we're not going to debate it tonight. We're just on the report because we, we've got opportunity to get more information. I I thought the report was good. No, the report's excellent. But I I think Are Jean, I, I we could get into it tonight, but I would rather wait for the public meeting and and get feedback from the bang the table and I'm just, I don't thank you. You're moving, moved by Deputy Mayor. Deputy Mayor. Yes, there we go. So it makes mention of schools. What about daycares? Like, do they have to be approved? Like, there's people running daycares out of their homes that have to be sanctioned, right? So, um, what about the daycares? it's an educational institution under the Act. Education Act. So it's not a daycare; it's an actual school. Hopefully, they'll be far enough away from the downtown, but you never know. But that would be one, two, if someone wanted to open one near a daycare, you could put in a comment under mm -hmm. the protecting children, public interest. Question. Are, you, are you moving it or do you want a question? question. Just okay. one quick one. Mm -hmm. uh, you can grow what, four, four plants. Four, four yeah. plants. And is that buffer included in the school? Where you no. Can, no. So no, it's only for retail stores. For the next school, store, you can put a plant in your... Yep. I mean, there won't be yep. Every industry. parent could have four in her kitchen, which will yep. produce some 4,600. 4, I'm not going to give you joint to the both of them. Yep. Yes, okay. thank you, Mayor Bridge. January 8th is the meeting. Yeah, the public meeting. So the thing, like, how many rules have changed in the last week? Will we be able to give good information on January the 8th, or should it, should it be pushed back, or... We're just decided. we're just deciding whether we're in or out. I, I think yeah. on January the eighth, they won't we won't be talking much. It'll be the public giving us their input. I, I, so I think we can leave it on the eighth because it's going to be the public, and we'll keep updating the public as on our on our system as, as we get more changes. But yeah, we just have to get that public opinion up to us on the eighth, and then we'll have the twenty second. We'll still by that hopefully by that time they'll have it. They'll have it down pat, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, so like I said, the rules have continued to change. So my goal over the next month is just to keep you all as up to date as I can, that whether that be through emails or through yep. another report on the 8th to do updates. Yep. Councilor Turton's moves the report. Councilor Anderson seconded it. All in favor? Good. 
Thank you. Great job. We got the right person on that. Yeah. <laughs> Pass it over that to you. That was a compliment. Dave. Take it as but a compliment. It, <laughs> Go for it. And a good understand. <laughs> I'm turning it over to the to uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Turton. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. So I'll ask our uh, Compliance Coordinator Todd Rogers to come to the podium. We've got three, three <laughs> items on the Public Works agenda this evening. And uh, the first item is the DWQMS Management Review. So, Todd, floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd just like to start by letting our, our new council members know there will be some information coming in the new year. Uh, it's, it's about the DWQMS, how it works, what it is, and everything. Just just timing a lot of the stuff in the program is time sensitive, so you have a year to get it done. So the management review, this is when we present it. So I will have information coming just so you guys have a better understanding of what we're talking about. So we, we completed our management review on November 20th. Uh, so the management review falls under element 20 of the management of the DWMS plan. And uh, it's completed once a year, and it's basically a way to... Uh, to keep a pulse on how well our program's working. So, and under the Safe Drinking Water Act, Section 19 is the legal responsibilities and duties of persons overseeing the drinking water system, which is council and the owners. So this is this is one of the key tools for bringing information forward so you guys are aware of everything that's going on in the system. So attached, there's two reports. There's the actual management review that the team sat down and went through. And then the second is uh, the outcomes of the meeting. So if you look to the end of that, there's our action items and, and dates attached to them. I just pulled out some highlights. There's a lot of information there. Uh, if there's any questions about any of it, I can definitely answer it. But uh, just a few of the highlights I'd like to go over tonight are, uh, so our inspection and audit results. So we were audited by SAI Global this year to uh, maintain our license. Uh, we we are accredited again. We had one opportunity for improvement uh, related to record retention, so we've made those changes. Our MOE inspection scores are as follows. Clifford 96.52%, Harrison 91.88%, Palmerston 95.97%, Mental Pines 100%. So uh, those results are all the result of the samples that were missed in September that did not miss their taken but didn't make it to the lab. So uh, we will be getting back to 100%. <laughs> That's what we're used to. So uh, other than that, we had one adverse water quality incident that we had to report, and it actually wasn't an incident. It was a planned maintenance on uh, our mental plants pump house. We had boil water right there. So we reported that. And uh, between all the towns, all the systems, we had three main breaks in 2017. Not, not a real big number, so that's good. Uh, as far as customer complaints, uh, our biggest percentage of our complaints remains high bills, leaks and holes and stuff. So we spend a lot of time doing meter reading and data collection. Uh, water quality complaints, we still do have a trend on George Street North, where we're seeing a higher than normal level of complaints there. We're continuing with our increased sampling, our increased flushing, and we're working with homeowners on an individual basis as need be. Uh, on the sampling side of things, back in September, I was here and talked about strontium. At that point, we were going to do our testing across all our wells. So we tested all the wells, and uh, we have strontium level, strontium and varying levels across Mintel. Uh, I sent those results to the ministry. They asked us to go back out and sample again with calcium as one of the parameters. We did that, sent them all that information. So they got back to us now saying that... Uh, the risk with strontium is it being absorbed by the system as calcium. Our calcium levels are so high in our water, so hard, that it's not an issue at this time. So they're recommending, they're, it's, it's not regulated at this point. They're just looking at it, right? And the province has said they're going to take that information about the calcium. They want that to be included if there is a, if there is a maximum acceptable limit right. set it on it. So right now it's, it's business as normal and they, they've said to carry on. So, uh, other things to note in the sampling section is, uh, again, they're looking at tightening up some of the standards. And I've talked about this before, but the one, the one that uh, is being talked about a lot right now is the lead. So we just went through lead sampling and, and all that. And so we ourselves are on a reduced sampling. They're talking about lowering the maximum acceptable limit from 10 down to 5. 
micrograms per meter. Uh, in our systems, that number isn't so bad, but what our inspector has indicated is they're looking at we might be going back to the homes to test. So that was a big deal back when we did it to start the program. So that could be coming again. So it's, it's a wait and see. None of this is for sure, but this is what our inspectors are telling us to, to prepare for. Uh, other than that, uh, manganese is another another element they're looking at, maybe putting some standards around. So right now there's an aesthetic objective, but not a maximum acceptable limit. With what they're talking, I've looked at our numbers. We won't be over, we shouldn't exceed what they're proposing, but we will be above that half of the maximum acceptable limit. So it'll lead to extra sampling. So there will be a bit of extra cost there. But again, none of this is in stone yet, and it could all change tomorrow. But this is just what our inspector is telling us to kind of keep an eye for. So, do they have any suggestions? Or like, if you had excessive levels and yeah. they want you to reduce them, do they have suggestions? If we're talking more filtering, ultraviolet. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, uh, yeah, it, it all depends on what mineral they're talking right. about. They all have treatment methods. Most of them are fairly expensive. Uh, <laughs> you probably heard in the news arsenic is the only one yeah. this year, right? So there, there are some municipalities around that found in their water, and some opted to drill new wells and whole new pump houses. There are, there are, there are treatments for everything that they're looking, but it's, it's all cost. very big cost. Yeah. yeah. So pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, like I said, the the action items that came out of our meeting are on that last page with timelines and people assigned to them. And uh, yeah, if there's any questions on any of that information at all. That Questions for Todd? Just um, brilliant. Um, I, I should know this, but I don't. Yep. Um, you got, do you monitor? Say somebody went away for for the winter, and okay. a toilet was running. It's going to cost some big bucks. And it just kept flowing and flowing and flowing. Do you guys monitor that so somebody doesn't get a huge? We, we don't have that money? ability to monitor real time like that. So. When we, it's a two month turnaround on the bills, right? So there would be at least a two month cycle. But when that, when we do that read for the two months, when they get that bill, it'll indicate on there that there's a leak. But there, there's no quicker way of doing it than that because we don't, we don't monitor it real time. We have no way of knowing. Okay. Like that. So, so we, in just a, a two, two months bill, they got to swallow that. And unfortunately. Yeah. When, when they do, when anyone does have an indication of a leak on their bill, at that point, we can go out and go into the hole. And we can do a physical data download off the unit itself. Mm -hmm. And quite often, right away, we can tell them what's leaking or tell them when it's occurring, right? So that, that's usually the process we go through. It, but you're two months into it by the time we get to that point. Okay. Yeah. Um, I noted, oh, sorry. Thank you. I noted that we had a whole bunch of projects not completed. Are those anticipated to all be completed by the end of 2018, or they're going to be carryovers too? Uh, Wayne would have to answer that. I, okay. The, yeah. The, I just saw them all. I'm yeah. thinking, whoa, we got a lot of work to do, yeah, and the yeah, year's almost I, done. The year, the year's pretty much a wrap, so I imagine most of the carryovers. But the management review—that's something else that should. Be, like, I do the majority of the work on it, but all the information in, the, in here comes from all the different departments. So okay. when we sit down as a group. Everybody speaks for their own. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Maybe further to uh, Councillor Anderson's. You see anything with the Laura Street Clifford? You still have to do some allocations, okay. so that will use up a lot of it. Thank you. Hearing no other questions, then the recommendation is that the council receives the compliance coordinator's November twentieth, two thousand eighteen report, DWQMS management review, and that all council members review approve and endorse the report as well as their commitment to the drinking water quality standards management. I'm a mover or Councillor Elliott, Mayor Bridge, all in favor of this motion? Yes, that's carried. Thank you. Thank you. So it's pretty important then that everybody uh, understands it and uh, Todd's extremely open uh, if you have questions on it. Um, no. Question: uh, Are the other two new counselors? Did, we, we always took we took a course. Are, yep. are, are they able to do a course? Yes. Todd? Uh, we're we're looking into that as soon as we get some days. <coughs> we'll talk in February, and Wellington County is actually looking at bringing doing an in-house. Oh, good. One where they bring everybody in. So 
I was trying to get those dates before I came today, but they, they just haven't rolled them out yet. So as soon as I get those dates, I'll make sure to pass them on. And anybody that is interested in going again, do yeah, I was going to say it's been and then, four years or five yeah. years. And uh, I'll send the website out to the, the the ministries put out a really good website with kind of a checklist for mm -hmm. counselors what you should be asking and looking for. So I'll make sure I get that out to you as well. No problem. That's that's a good question. Thank you, Todd. So the second item here on the public works agenda is from uh, the roads and drainage manager, Mr. McIsaac, uh, has to do with the end street clipper drainage curbing asphalt tender. Yeah. So this is the uh, <clears throat> the retendering of this project, which is uh, all of the entire project of Ann Street from Park right through to Queen Street. Um, and attached are the overall results of the, the retendering. Okay, so the the range, the price ranging from 947,000 to 1.258 um, million, um, and that is for the the complete project. Um, with this tender, we have the capabilities of reducing the scope, depending on uh, budgetary restraints, um, and there's uh, we have come up with. Um, sort of three options for council to move forward with uh, one being proceed with the the entire uh, um, project as as quoted um, the second option would be to proceed with half the project from queen street west to allen street west carrying the budgeted figure of 450,000, um, eliminating um, a few of the, the outlined aspects to the project and then the third option would be to retender the complete project. Um, since this report was uh, produced on Thursday, we have had confirmation from the lowest um, bidder that they would carry the prices into uh, the 2019 construction <coughs> season for this project, um, knowing that it would be passed at tonight's council <laughs> so that's one of the the stipulations with that but uh, so basically the the way it's laid out there um, with the recommendation to do half the project the reason for that half the project is the, the houses have been all developed in those two blocks there is still construction happening on the other end the south end of Van Street so that's the reason for the breakdown <coughs> of, uh, of this project as laid out. Any questions? questions? Okay, so we've got three options. <coughs> as quoted, uh, Queen to Allen at 450000 and complete retender. So the recommendation is that the council receives the roads and drainage managers December 13th, 2018 report from Triton Engineering and Street Clippard drainage curbing asphalt tender that half of the Ann Street project from Queen Street West to Ann Street West, sorry, Queen Street West to Allen Street West carrying a budget figure of 450000 to complete this work based on either the low or second lowest bidder, whomever is willing to carry their 2018 contract pricing which would eliminate 1.26, 1.27, 1.35, 1.36 from the project and reducing the contingency to 30,000, which includes HST and engineering. So that's number two option. Can I have uh, any any discussion on that? <coughs> well, other than I, I think from a budgetary standpoint, that's the one we can afford. Um, and it, the nice part about that is where they're going to be building the next houses, the section we aren't going to be doing, yeah. so they'll be in construction next year anyway. So hopefully we can then, once they're done their construction, look to the next year to do that. But that was sort of how I think the staff brought it forward. It was like we'll get the people that have been in there. Those houses are all been built. They've done a yeah. good job on those houses. <coughs> Let's get the street done for them. Um, we're, all, we're also hoping to figure out construction industry based on these new prices. Mm -hmm. We are seeing higher than normal pricing, so we're hoping that either things come back down or at least stabilize and not in increase. Moving I will move that. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. Can we have a seconder? Councillor Anderson, all in favor of this motion? 
<clears throat> against. That's carried. Thank you. So number three item on the agenda is uh, uh, an item we talked about earlier this evening. But uh, Michael, go ahead. Okay. This this item is uh, basically re requesting the delegation at uh, uh, the 2019 um, Good Roads Conference in February, um, basically to discuss um, construction projects in the town of Minto directly affecting us, the, hi the highway pro projects, and then also um, try to figure out what sort of connecting link funding is going to be available moving forward, if it's going to be um, a stabilized fund or if it's going to be on an as-needed basis kind of thing. Um, any questions, questions? Mayor Bridge? Just, yeah. just on that, uh, it, it, it does state um, Highway 89. We did get confirmation that probably Highway 89 isn't going to be done next year, the bridge, which yeah. is good news for us. We would have been in big trouble having to do both at the same time. That would have been a real construction nightmare. nightmare. So, But we'll still talk to them about that because we're not happy with the detours and where they would want to put them. Nobody's going to drive up to Tividale and back down to Harrison. There's nobody in the right mind, anyway. Yeah. Um, and we we haven't we haven't had any confirmation even on the Highway Nine. Yeah, Highway Nine hasn't year. been yet. So it's we small, want we so. want to follow up on our meeting <coughs> with the, uh, the the PA, the yeah. parliamentary assistant. It was very good about coming up to Clifford and talking to us. And, yeah. and I think we have some open dialogue there, and let's finalize it. So that's why yeah. good roads. Yeah. Other questions? So the recommendation is the council receives the December 12, 2018 report from the Roads and Drainage Manager regarding a delegation request, 2019 OGRA conference, and the council requests <clears throat> a delegation to Minister, Minister, Minister of Transportation regarding Highway 89 and Highway 9 work in 2019 as well as connecting link funding and access to provincial gas tax. And I have a mover and a seconder. Councillor Elliott, thank you. Councillor Dirksen, all in favor of this motion? Against? That's question. carried. So, you have a question? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I, I, we're only a month away from that, and I just wonder how long, that, like, when do they give us confirmation that we can be a delegation? <coughs> I'm not um, sure how quick they. We're, we're, we're no, it's in February. I'm working on that right now. Yeah. Usually, uh, I'll get back to usually that. a week or so before. Week. A week or so before. They'll get, no, we have to get it in now, Mark. Oh, I was going to yeah. say. It's, yeah. Only, yeah. Oh. it's actually in February. Uh, and, yeah, it's yeah. February that well, one. Well, okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Whatever. So, um, the wire for the request. <laughs> and, and to give uh, give the government Sounds credit, the last that uh, last demo they did amazing amount of delegations to prove that everybody <coughs> but no. accepted, which is unusual. So. Let's see what happens. See what happens time? this time. Uh, okay. Thank nice. you, Mike. Pass the chair back to the uh, mayor. Yeah, I'm, and I have to do the treasury report for now. Well, we'll be changing this up in the in the. Uh, Mary Lou's here. She could do it. <laughs> oh no! I better not let her do it. It was a lot of spending. Gord, yeah. you're up. All right. Thank you. <laughs> well, and we've got two check runs. So our, our first one is the uh, November fifteenth one, totaling a million five twenty nine five twenty four, and uh, a lot of what we talked about is is what's being put in place here. Um, so we've done uh, on the Alora Street connecting link, <coughs> the uh, part that's due to uh, just burying the underground uh, the uh, hydro services in that. Now it's about 84000 about 3000 for the traffic lights up there. And then another 824000 for actual construction. <coughs> and another thirty for engineering. So that's all on that one project. And, and um, we also did uh, 170,000 on sidewalks. Looking into a bit of uh, engineering on our uh, wastewater plants and that for about 10,000. Uh, Harrison Arena, we've done a, a bit of work there. Uh, lobby furnace for 6,700. Carpeting for just under 4,000. Uh, back in roofs again for 2,100. That one. The next one totals three hundred and seventy-six thousand. Um, basically, uh, hundred minutes of payments, hundred and fifty. And we got the public works truck, so that's a five fifty that I know has been presented before with all the 
enhancements and all that for 109,000. Uh, some drainage work uh, for 15,000. And uh, a late received grass cutting bill for about 10,000. Yeah, it's more grass to cut. <laughs> I hope it doesn't go anymore. I hope they're done. <laughs> I really got any questions on that, Mark? You may have touched that. I wasn't paying attention, but the ED for 104, 105,000. Yeah, that's the, uh, the lights in that. Uh, so when we do uh, the uh, Clifford project, it was actually broken into roads, water, sewer, and 400,000 in economic development, which is streetscapes. So that part that's come forward tonight, that's reburying the uh, hydro cables and roots and all that. But it's not something that's really related to the roads. It's kind of enhanced. Work with West Area and do that at the same time. Busy month, ED. <laughs> yeah, ED. Yeah, was, yeah, busy. Just, just on the uh, on the truck, I just want to remind everybody that that truck, I believe, was paid for by the three trucks we got rid of. Which, which even though it shows up as a bill, um, we uh, we brought three trucks out of our fleet that we felt that we didn't need anymore, thanks to Mike and his crew figuring out how they're going to do things and bring graders back into play. And uh, so when we sold those trucks, we actually got enough money from the sale of those trucks to pay for that new truck. Well, I, I give them a lot of credit for that, even though it shows up as a bill and we have to pay for it. Sure. We did have revenue that offsets some of that. Okay. I'll recommend make them both at the same time. Yeah. Okay. We'll recommend that the Council of Town of Minnow receives the treasurer's reports dated the 28th of 2018, and they want on the 15th. Um, any regarding the approval of accounts and approves the town of Minto accounts <laughs> by the department. I have a mover and a second for that, so these are two minutes. Yes, I am. <laughs> Councilor Dirksen and, and <laughs> Councilor Anderson, all in favor. Okay, good. All right, other business has disclosed. Who wants to start? We're going to sing right at the end, right? Sure. Okay, well. Sure. Or we can sing now if you like. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Is anybody? Uh, who, who, yeah, I'm not going to sing, but I have a. No. <laughs> well, you know, you have something you want to speak. I used to sing. Yes. Well, you can. You were going to have. Okay, a couple of weeks ago, I had a, a, a tech or a, one of my emails was sent out from Amo, and you guys all got it. They want, it, they want us to respond on the housing situation. They're working on that. They're going to meet in March. That, you know, all that good stuff. But they want input from the public, and I, I think it's a good idea if we send a letter to Amo lobbying for our needs and, and what we would like to see in, in the, they call it affordable, but you had a good term for attainable. But I think we should comment as a council to aim on that topic. Yeah, and did you want to speak to that, uh, Belinda? Because you were at a couple, you were at a couple meetings. I was at one recently as well that had a lot of, we did a lot of talking about different solutions that might be out there, Mark. Maybe we should have a report. There's like a letter of report, maybe to us that would go on where we might do it, but pass it on to Amos. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to Belinda can maybe. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I was up in uh, the Blue Mountains for a session uh, put on all about attainable, affordable housing. And uh, they had the Canadian Mortgage and Housing people there. They had some people from the Blue Mountains. And uh, there was another group there. And they were all very good speakers. And they're, oh, great county planners. And they were all um, very good speakers looking at all different options, being innovative and creative. And as our um, joint economic development meeting with Wellington North and Mapleton, which is going to be the end of February, beginning of March, we're actually looking at bringing those people back and inviting, obviously, council, our economic development committees, the chambers, and developers in our community to come and hear these because they were really good um, good things people were doing. They were just really innovative. And when the county's doing their official plan stuff, there's some things that should be looked at. Um, there's things with the community improvement plans that could be looked at as uh, incentives for people to do attainable housing. So... There was a lot of good information. I'm happy to share those presentations with you. And and just to, on top of that, uh, just recently, last Thursday, we had uh, 140 people come to our Western Wardens Workforce Planning Session, 
and had some of the same speakers. Had one of the speakers yeah. from from uh, Blue Mountain had some great ideas. Attainable housing that's that is a big issue. Um, so I like I think we we can send something to Amo, but I'm just saying like it's it's something we're working on. I think if we can come up with I, who's going to come up with the best solution? I don't know. There's just so many different things to do. Um, I think the government, there was a lot of people there from the government at that session. Um, and they know, as far as workforce planning, if we don't have attainable housing or rental housing or something that we, people can, can get into, we're not going to get our workforce. And, uh, you know, we, we think we got it bad when our, we have a $300,000 house when you talk to some people, a good example up in Collingwood, at Blue Mountain, when the cheapest house you can get up there, starter house is seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So, how has a worker even got a spot to to, to hang their hat? So, I, I don't know what more we can do, Mark. We I think we we have to get into these sessions, and uh, I, I think Amo knows about it for sure, and I and we can uh, respond to them, but we don't have the magic bullet. But I realize that, but we could help. Uh, it's a very important topic in here, and we're struggling to keep up with the housing. And they've asked for a response. I think, as a council, we should we should uh, reply. Well, we'll reply. I just don't know. Like as I say, I don't know what we're going to say other than we know it's a big issue and we're working on it with everybody else. But but our needs. So there's there's different varieties of affordable housing, and what our needs. They need to know about it. I don't want to let this op this this pass without doing it because we can, that, put, there something, are, we can put something together. There are government body for lobbying. Pardon me? When does that do? It was, I think we have a month or so yet before. But I could write a report for the Economic Development Committee. I think that would be good. And, and, and some of these, some of these one you. speakers, that's what I'm thinking, Mark, and then we can take that report and send it to Emil. Like We've got the same issues as a lot of people, I can tell you that right now. We have to keep pounding at them. or, or they? Oh, yeah, no, they know. We'll go around the tree forever on this if we don't. No. <clears throat> they're, they're pounding the government because it's, it's a three-prong approach. You need federal government money, you need provincial money, and we need private industry being involved. The biggest thing I find is you got to get private industry to make it worthwhile for them to do the projects. And I, I don't blame a private contractor not wanting to do X number of a project if they can't get any profit from it. But at the same token, how do we get around that? How do we use CIP and all the other things, uh, development charges, and how do we do that? And the county's worked on their CIP. That's part of their issues with the planning department. Maybe we have to come up with some incentives for private enterprise to, to get involved because taxpayers' money, there's not enough out there to do it. So I'm with you. Thanks, Belinda. If you put something together, we could send it in as a council. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. So everybody knows it's the time of, sea, time of the year and shopping local is fairly important. I just wanted to remind everybody that uh, Thursday night is men's night in uh, Harrison. So if you haven't got your gifts purchased, which you got yours done yet? Uh, I didn't say I hadn't. <laughs> I didn't say I did, but uh, it is uh, men's night downtown Harriston. Um, well, I just uh, wanted to make the comment that it is Christmas, and uh, um, I have heard lots of um, people who organize. Um, ways for people to contribute to those who need it this time of year um, speak very highly of uh, the people in this community and how um, they have been very giving this year and so I just wanted to uh, say that that's a great thing that uh, happens in this area also wanted to say that we had our second 100 women who care rural Wellington meeting last evening um, we have our hundred women who care is actually over 125 women who care now in rural Wellington. People said it couldn't be done. Um, so we had three deserving uh, charities nominated and then we voted and the Raymoth Center in Mount Forest uh, will be the recipient of over $10,000. Very good. And I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a, and a safe and happy 2019. Okay. Um, just a reminder to people, anybody who doesn't know that the Christmas dinner, community Christmas dinner, is happening at Palmerston 
at one o'clock. Meals can be delivered, rides are available. Let the people who might be out there working on that day to drop by for a cup of coffee, piece of pie, and just keep <coughs> spreading the word. The calls are coming in fast and furious. And a reminder to everybody that there's no barriers. That's for all of Minto and anybody outside of Minto. We will get them there if they need a meal, or we'll get a meal to them if we can't get them to the meal. And a Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Just, just to add to what, what Judy's talking about, and I, I applaud the, the town uh, staff here. We did a family in the town. Uh, to I, My daughter does the family uh, tree thing, and they did 18 families this year, and, and the giving was amazing. Hmm. But she was able to get all that there. Chris, I think some of the fire departments did some. and um, Two, three? Four. Four, four from the fire department. It, it's great for the see the staff get involved in the community and do do all that as well. So we'll sing we'll sing. Uh, yes. One more reminder, all y'all. The fire night celebration is yes. happening oh, yeah. since we don't have another meeting. Fire night right. celebration on New Year's Eve hmm. with fireworks and that again this year. So great event. Make sure you get out. And I, uh, you got my notice. I like, got enough volunteers now. Volunteers. Okay. So the council is going to be there selling s'mores and other things and. And uh, it's a great family night, and you can still go out and celebrate afterwards. It's supposed to 8 o'clock, but make sure you bring your people in. And uh, we're looking forward to it. All right, moving on. We're just going to sing at the end. We wish you a Merry Christmas, so get ready for it. Moved by Councillor Anderson, signed by Councillor McKenzie. The county, uh, the committee of the whole convenes and regular council in favor. Moved by Councilor Gunston and second by Councilor McKenzie. The Council of the Town of Minto ratifies the motions made in the Committee of the Whole. All in favor? Moved by Councilor Gunston, second by Councilor Anderson. The bylaw number 2018-83 to amend the zoning bylaw 0186 as amended regarding 24 George Street North. Harris can be introduced, read for a second and third time. Passed by the Council Seal Silver Corporation. All in favor? Moved by Deputy Mayor Turton and second by Councillor Elliott, the bylaw number 2018-94 to execute a public facilities limited use agreement with the Clifford and District Horticulture Society be introduced, read first, second, and third time and pass by the council. Seal the, seal the corporation. All in favor? Moved by Councillor Dirksen, second by Councillor Anderson, bylaw number 2018-95 to execute a public facilities limited use agreement with the Clifford Community Church be introduced, read first, second, and third time and pass the open council to seal, seal the corporation. All in favor? Moved by Councilor McKenzie, second by Councilor Anderson, bylaw number 2018-96 to execute a public facilities limited use agreement with the Harrison and District Horticulture Society be introduced and read first, second, and third time. And pass the open council to seal, seal the corporation. All in favor? Moved by Councilor Gunson, second by Councilor Elliott, the bylaw number 2018-97 bylaw to a Exempt part lot control for lands northeast of George Street in the former town of Harrison, the town of Minnow, under Section 57.1 of the Planning Act, RSO 1990, as amended. Be introduced, read first, second, and third time, and passed over the council and sealed the corporation. All in favor? Moved by Councilor Dirksen, separate by Deputy Mayor Turton, that the bylaw number 2018 98 to confirm the actions of the council of the corporation of the town of Minnow respecting a meeting. Held December 18th, 2018, be introduced and read first, second, and third time, and passed over the council and seal with seal the corporation. All in favor? Don't cut us off yet. Don't cut us off yet. Okay, we're gonna sing. We're gonna sing, and then we'll do the final one. Ready? So we wish you a merry Christmas. I think that's it. Who wants to start there? Playing the piano. Well, you know, just okay. We used to have uh, Deputy Mayor Faulkner used to have the give us the tone. Where is he? Can you handle it? You've been called back twice, buddy. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't actually. Yeah, you go oh, ahead. On. Deputy Mayor, you ready? Okay, you ready? One, ready? two, three. We wish you a merry Christmas. We wish you a merry Christmas. We wish you a merry Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you very much for a good happy meeting, everybody. Oh. <laughs> I wish you had Judy do it. She's the expert. Yeah. Moved by Councillor Elliott, second by Councillor Gunson. The Council of the Town of Minnow adjourns to meet again at the call of the mayor. All in favor? Thank you for a good meeting, everybody.